Hello and uh, welcome to the technical track of API Lift Jakarta. Uh, so we will start uh, like the, the the technical track today with a speaker who will tell us a little bit about accelerating user acquisition and improving customer retention through integrated build payment features. So let me, I'm really glad uh, to uh, invite on the stage Jacob Rose, CEO and founder of IO Connect, who will tell us a little bit how we can do that with APIs, right, and with an API mindset. So hello, Jacob, how are you? Hi, Mehdi, thank you very much. Great to be here. Yeah, great to have you too. Are you able to share your screen? And I'll do that right away. And again, to all attendees, if you have any questions, you ask the question in the chat uh, stage, and we'll be glad uh, to ask them to Jacob at the end of the 20 minute presentation. Jacob, the stage is yours, thank you. Thank you very much, Mehdi. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, so today's session, we wanna to touch a bit on accelerating user acquisition and improving customer retention through integrated bill payment features. Uh, it's a topic that is very close to our heart here at AU Connect, something that we spend a lot of time and resources on over the last couple of years. And we'll be sharing a bit more about uh, the bill payment space in Indonesia overall, but also what we're doing in the space and how we can actually help your business to uh, engage with more customers, monetize and drive retention. Uh, my name is Jacob Rost. I'm the CEO and founder of AO Connect. And uh, without further ado, let's cut right to the chase and, and start with the presentation. Um, so why bill payments? Uh, simple answer is it's simply something that everyone in Asia has to do. Uh, out of the 265, uh, 270 million Indonesian population, uh, there's 220 million Indonesians that need to pay bills one way and or the another. And the stats are actually quite staggering. There is a, a, a research from, from the central bank here, Bank Indonesia, that suggests that especially for low income households, as much as 40% uh, of their spend is actually going through bill payments, um, school tuition and rent and all of this. Those are monthly recurring payments, meaning that every every single month we have to pay that. It's a necessity, right? And uh, some of the popular bill payment types are probably well known. Uh, we did a quick survey among um, some of our partners and electricity was ranked uh, at the top one. Uh, mobile phone bills, a very popular use case, but then also access to internet, water, uh, loan and lending products like mortgages uh, and other financial products like insurance, premium payments, and so on are among some of the common ones. Now, what's actually quite interesting is once you open up uh, that landscape a bit more, there are actually close to 25 or even a bit more of, of different bill payment types that might not be as known, but they do make a lot of sense at the end of the day, right? So among them are basically uh, credit card repayments, it's tax, uh, there is a uh, rent and property related, there's mandatory government health insurance, uh, there is uh, all sorts of consumer loans, pay TV and so on. So it quickly adds up uh, to a point where an average in a nation has to pay between 8 to 15 uh, bill payments every single month. So that average is to 2 to 3 per, per week, which is quite significant if, if you think about it. Now, this essentially begs the question, how do Indonesians pay their bills uh, in, in the first place. Uh, and we all know Indonesia is a, is a, a country that, is, uh, that has some staggering stats, right? It's uh, uh, the fourth largest population in, in the world. It has uh, half of the population that is below the age of 30, 17,000 islands, um, fifth largest GDP economy uh, by 2030, and so on. So those, I think, are some of the very exciting stats, and that's also why uh, you know a lot of entrepreneurs come to Indonesia and start companies here. Now, when it comes to bill payment specifics, there are a couple of challenges, and this is mostly due to the huge number of unbanked population, and uh, going in line with that, the very low credit card penetration. So uh, definitely below 10%. Some figures even suggest as low as as three, four percent. Um, so this is actually the reason why bill pay payments can be challenging in Indonesia uh, compared to some more developed countries where you would typically just look at the end of the month on your bank statements and all your water, gas, electricity bills sort of get auto deducted. That's not the case in Indonesia, right? So first of all, banking infrastructure might be lacking, but then due to the unbanked population, other payment channels have to actually emerge in order to get there. Now, this in itself has created a massive industry of what we call bill payment points or channels 
across the entire country. So if you have been to Indonesia, I'm sure you have seen this all across. So anything from ATMs, which act at bill payment points, to mobile banking, to online platform uh, like e-commerce, uh, offline retails, you know, the Alpha Marts and Indomarits, but even mom and pop shows, ancient banks, uh, and all sorts of other channels have emerged and actually fill that gap and fill that need. Um, and that makes a lot of sense at the end of the day, because if you look at the total market of bill payments, it's, it's 170 billion of payment volume that goes through uh, every single year. It's, it constitutes of 15% of, of Indonesian GDP, if you will. And it's actually a massive agglomeration of a lot of already big markets, right? Property payments are huge. Telco payments are huge. Uh, lending market is huge. So all of this essentially ends up on the consumer side in, in some form of, of bill payment. And this is why we actually like to call it in IO Connect, the, the largest market in Indonesia uh, in, in a way. Um, why do those payment points offer bill payments to the customer? Well, at the end of the day, it's a great opportunity to monetize your users, to drive and create, uh, engagement and, and increase retention. And that's exactly what the session is about, right? So if you have footfall in an offline store or if you have some sort of like um, consumer facing app, whether you're FinTech or startup or a large enterprise, this is a great case to utilize. And people do have to come back frequently to pay their bills. And they will, if they do that through your platform, then you have, you know, the stickiness, but you also have the data that, that goes in, in line with that. And if we look a bit at, at the ecosystem in Indonesia, uh, you know, a lot of startup funding has actually uh, gone into the country and uh, internet enabled, um, you know, uh, consumer households are also on the rise. So this has really led to a flood of consumer facing startups, whether that's in e uh, fintech and e-commerce or, or other areas that all sort of like going after the consumers and in, in a way kind of trying to offer their products and their services to the end consumer. Um, now, why am I saying all of this? What's, what's, what's the issue here at hand? If you are running one of those uh, ecosystems and you monetize bill payments and tap into that huge market, the issue is typically that it's a very low margin category to start with. That's okay because it's, it's a volume game, but it's also not your core business. And there's actually a very high cost of building and running that use case altogether, starting with all the integrations that are needed, um, but then also with the maintenance that goes in hand. And a lot of the companies that we work with at IU Connect are actually realizing this way too late. They're starting with one or two integrations. They might be launching one or two bill payment products on their platforms. And then they realize getting from one or two categories to 25 plus categories, it, it's a massive company in its own that they would have to start and hire people around it. And it just doesn't justify uh, the, the, the initial purpose anymore. Um, so that's a bit the situation that we that you see on the right side of the slide where uh, things can get very messy. Um, now, that's exactly the gap that uh, we at IO Connect are actually tapping in. So we've built a solution, which is a, is a simple API that actually gives every customer or consumer facing platform, whether it's offline, online uh, and so on, a direct access to uh, at least 3000 digital products across 25 categories. Um, it's essentially a great way to get started with that use case. And it's uh, by, by far the largest offering in the market when it comes to, to the depth and, and the width of, of bill payment assortment that is attached to, to the API. Um, I want to show a bit of, of how that works, right? So um, in IO Connect, we have actually spent the last five and a half years of wor working very closely with uh, bill providers. So this is basically can be a utility, can be a government office, can be any subscri subscription based uh, um, offering in the market that has to basically chase their customers for, for money for recurring payments every single month. Uh, we have put all of that into one platform and we basically now partner with any sort of consumer facing business, whether it's an e-commerce, an e-wallet, a supermarket, a kiosk, uh, fintechs and so on. Uh, it ranges from large enterprises with tens of millions of, of customers to a newly started startup. I think that's really the power of an, of an API business that everyone can integrate it and get started immediately. And uh, we, through the IO Connect platform and network, we do serve 25 million customers uh, on a monthly basis now, indirectly through our channel partners. 
which is 10% uh, of the population so far that need to pay uh, their, their, their bills. Uh, I want to explain a bit how how it works behind. This is an, it's an API uh, uh, conference. So uh, let's, let's pull back the curtain a, big, uh, a bit and show uh, how, uh, yeah, how the mechanics are. So basically, AO Connect as a platform uh, is integrating with build providers through an API. On the other hand, it's using digital platforms, fintechs, or retailers through another API. So that's basically how the ecosystem gets closed. And then uh, our channel partners are essentially serving their end users. So we're a pure B2B company and we don't interact with the end customers directly. It's done through our channel partners, but we sort of like come in and facilitate and give this offering um, that then can be used as a white label solution on, on our partner side. Um, so we actually ended up uh, calling ourselves Indonesia's Open Bill Network. Uh, we're connecting now more than a thousand utility companies, type of providers, bill providers. So basically, that side of the of the bill providers, uh, with now more than a hundred plus B two C facing uh, and customer serving platforms uh, in in the market. And uh, we call it an open bill network because our idea is really all about inclusion. So as I said earlier on the channel partner side, anyone from a small new startup that has been in the marketplace for two months to like a big bank can actually integrate with that API. But also on the biller side, right? If you are a company that needs to collect regularly from um, your customers and you want to open up those payment points, then you're very welcome to also uh, join the network and get access to all the payment points. Um, we have been around for, for five and a half years. We have uh, uh, more than a hundred people uh, in our um, uh, in, in the company right now, uh, we are uh, venture funded uh, through three rounds so far, uh, mostly through institutional and also a couple of strategic investors. And so far, we're only operational in Indonesia, so that that's kept us really busy all well, last year to kind of do the plucking and the pump plumbing and and get to the stage where we are now. To give a bit more color on how that that network looks like and graphics. It's, it's a bit like this. So behind every category that I showed earlier, there are tens, hundreds, or in some cases, even thousands of billers that feed sort of like the category. And um, full disclosure, this, this picture is actually only showing 10% of the, of the billers or the partners that we have on the network. There was simply not enough space on, on a simple slide to put all the logos. So it's, it's a very comprehensive operation that we run in order to make life for our channel partners very easy and help them grow their business and engage their customers um, through, through billings and bill payments at the end of the day. That entire network is powered by, um, our a a by three APIs in particular. Uh, one, as I mentioned, is really the channel gateway API through billers uh, that gives them access to now 2 million payment points across the entire country. Um, while on the other side, you have what we call the digital and build products API. That's the one that goes to the consumer facing uh, channel partners uh, and, and gives them access to that entire biller network. And uh, we're also proud to say that this year we actually launched an auto billing API. Um, I'll have a bit more information there, but it's already live with, with a, a big tier one bank in Indonesia uh, that we've been doing a pilot over the last couple of months. Um, our customers are very diversified. We count some of the biggest banks in Indonesia as customers who are using our API to power their bill payment ecosystem. Um, we have uh, a couple of household names in the offline and, and O2O space, uh, from legacy and traditional companies to new and emerging startups in that space. Uh, online is obviously a big focus for us. Uh, that includes big e-commerce uh, customers, it includes e-wallets, it includes other fintech companies. And we also do work with distribution partners, which can be um, uh, system integrators, which can be uh, coding companies, software shops, and so on, who sort of like to use our APIs for, for their customers. Um, what's interesting is the Indonesian market landscape right now, uh, as of today, is still very heavily driven on the O2O and offline side. This is uh, where most of the chunk of the bill payments are still today and um, and we do see that actually continuing for quite a while even though there is a shift to online uh, which is happening still the biggest bulk is there now online i think it's it's a clear case some of the um uh, some of the companies have been actually heavily promoting their bill payments offering over the last couple of years so it's a it's a growing sector it will definitely take up more of the 
the marketplace uh, and market share in the near future. Uh, banks is an interesting one. It's it's a bit overlooked uh, in the landscape, but it's uh, it's a natural contestant to take big market share in buildings because banks already have a source of funds to start with from the customer sites, unlike some of the other channels. And I think if you see what's happening with some of the new banks and digital and challenger banks coming in the marketplace, I think we're going to see uh, yeah, a, a, a sort of a disruption or some uh, shake up of, of the banking system as well, uh, and probably pushing towards more customer geared solutions like bill payments. Um, and we in IUConnect have really seen uh, like sort of a paradigm shift, if you will, over the last couple of years where um, uh, before bill payments used to be quite messy, it used to be quite on a one on one basis. Uh, a lot of companies have realized not only is it a low margin category for them, but it's also not their core business. And uh, what, you know, if you look at how the market has been reacting to COVID over the last 12, 14 months, uh, there's a clear a tendency to, tr uh, to go to leaner organizations, focus on your core business, uh, and actually uh, use third parties for, for everything non-related. Uh, and um, uh, a lot of com uh, companies that are approaching us have also realized that they need to f move very fast. So if they want to offer a very comprehensive 25 category offering to their customers and they're behind, then using one single API is definitely the fastest way to use it. Um, we as a network take care of much more than just the integration. So a lot of our partners, after they started the integrations, they realized the biggest pain point is actually coming from the maintenance and the operations of that network. And that's where things get uh, quite comprehensive. And that's exactly our bread and butter, what we run on a daily basis with uh, tens of thousands of transactions. And we have built a lot of microservices and automations around that uh, to figure out that the ops are correct, that the reconciliation makes sense, that the maintenance is done correctly, and so on. So it's a, it's a standalone business. Um, it's just same as any other network that you see operating in Indonesia, just very focused towards this, this bill payment use case that we're, um, that we're going after. Um, and the volumes per bill category have been actually quite diversified. So while telco is still um, the biggest category in contribution, it's actually a category that is decreasing in, in absolute share as a lot of those new billers and medium-sized billers are coming online, especially from the postpaid side, uh, where there's a lot, but also a couple of the prepaid billers, uh, for instance, like uh, e-money top-ups and so on that we have in our network that have actually made a, uh, have shown really good growth over the last couple of years. Uh, we have also started a micro biller solution. Uh, there's 400,000 schools in Indonesia that have to actually collect on a, on a monthly basis tuition payments. There are uh, millions of properties that need to collect rent payments and maintenance payments and so on. Um, we're, we've built and, and tested a solution there. It's still a small, small part of our network, but it's something that we're very excited uh, in, in the near future. Um, just on, a, on, on some of the, the companies that we work with, um, Bugala Pak, they're actually very happy about the digital products offering. Um, they, this is a core offering actually on their, on the Mitra Bugala Pak side on their O2 offering, where they have now more than 7 million partners. And, uh, we've had a really good working relationship with them, but on the, on the online space and the digital space, Dana, um, uh, the end financial, uh, and app in Indonesia, uh, has actually driven really good volumes. And they've actually pointed out that bill payments became one of the most popular features among Dharma users during, during the pandemic. And speaking about the pandemic, this is a, a, a case study done by uh, McKinsey, and uh, they actually put the online bill payment space as, as the absolute clear winner and lasting winner of the whole pandemic um, as things shift towards more digital and, uh, and consumer behavior change. This is uh, more likely to stay. Uh, now, wrapping up the presentation, um, maybe a quick peek into the future. Where do we see uh, the bill payments market go in Indonesia and what does that mean for our customers who want to drive engagement, uh, uh, increase user retention uh, and monetize the use case? Uh, we do believe that there's actually a shift towards uh, a more subscription-based or uh, auto-billing experience in the near future. And we have actually built uh, an API solution around that so think about bill enrollment, billing reminders, payment processing, bill presentment on your platform. That's what, what this API can handle. But I think it's probably uh, uh, a, a different uh, kind of presentation in its own. Uh, so yeah, just to summarize, um, 
bill payments, it's a massive market and it's the right use case in Indonesia to monetize your users, to drive engagement and increase, uh, increase retention. We have seen tremendous success from some of the really large players in the market that are doing it, but also from some of the up and coming, you know, new, new um, uh, market entrants that are using an API to engage with their customers on this. It has grown their business tremendously. Uh, they're getting a, a, a wealth of information and data about their users, and they're very happy about the, uh, the, the, the retention that they see. And now it's easier than ever to get started very quickly because we have uh, put a solution in the market that can really help grow your business. So leaving it there, thank you very much, and uh, excited to hear a couple of questions. Hello, Jacob. Perfect. Thank you very much for this presentation. It's a it's a really a huge a huge topic like the billing, right? And uh, having a, one API to build them all, right? No, so that's uh, that's really tough. Yeah. We have a question from Tiono who said, "Could you share what technology stack you use for IO Connect API, and what is your consideration to choose it?" Yeah. So let me start off by saying I I, I'm, I, I come from a commercial background, so we we have our expert team, our CTO about it, but I know that we that we basically try to run uh, where we, I mean, we work with all the big players, Google Cloud, AWS, and so on, but we have built a very sort of like cloud agnostic step. And there's also a couple of regulatory uh, belts and whistles attached of doing business in Indonesia. So we have to have a local data center. Uh, we're regulated by Bank Indonesia. We audited by them. Our books are open and so on. So it's, uh, yeah, compliance is very important. And this is also the reason why with some of our, it's for instance, banking partners, some of the indication can take up to uh, like 10 or 11 months from the first discussion to going live because there is a lot of kind of like additional layers around it. They, they won't understand the text, like they won't understand the solutions, they won't understand the mitigation system and so on. So we've built a lot of automation, a lot of backups. And, uh, and, and so far, this is something that our partners have really appreciated. Hello? Uh, yeah, not sure what's going on. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. What's going I, don't know. I, think, I think there was a, a quick, quick issue, but uh, I changed the uh, the Wi-Fi. It works now. No, my second question. Thank you for your answer. My the second question was more mostly about documentation. You know, billing can be really complex in many, many different areas, processes, telcos, and industry. How documentation is important in your, let's say, strategy? Yeah, documentation is extremely important, not only to us, but also for our partners that are integrating, especially as we're actually moving towards an open API uh, uh, on the biller side, for instance, where billers can come to us and uh, really basically download the, the documentation right away, see the systems and see how they can integrate with us. Um, it's also, in all fairness, something that we can still improve on. So this is uh, probably, uh, and I think the tech community knows that something where everyone is always lagging behind a bit, a kind of like rolling out a solution and then the documentation follows. But we have actually put significant effort into uh, having a very clean uh, documentation. It's all online uh, and, uh, and it also goes with the direct access to actually uh, someone in our tech team or integration team to correspond if there's any questions. I think he's still on mute, Midi. Yeah. How does AU Connect explain to the more old-fashioned officials regarding this bill payment digitalization? How does that's a great, that's a great question. So we do see that on both sides, right? On on the biller side, I mean, we do basically deal with a lot of state-owned uh, companies, right? Like some of those utility companies, especially in TRB and T cities, 
are still very old fashioned and uh, especially from, from a tech stack and, and system perspective as well. But even some of the banks that we uh, integrate uh, the, uh, on, as our channel partners uh, are also trying actually to, to modernize and improve their businesses. Now, what we see is there's actually a lot of openness. There's a willingness to, to modernize and to drive digital transformation. It just always is, the problem is more the, the how, you know, and that's where we have great discussions with our partners and we can actually help them how they do it, what it means, what the steps are and so on. Uh, but overall, our experience is that uh, there's a lot of uh, willingness for innovation in, in Indonesia overall that uh, it has especially shaped up over the last couple of years. I think also going in line with some of the unicorns that have been around and, and just the general openness in, in the sector. So we've actually been very happy about that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, last question, does you connect publish their pricing from Lucas? Or... So I do believe we, we have published our pricing. If not, then this is something that, I mean, it's very transparent. So uh, I think our, our account team has that and everyone who's interested can get access to that. Um, uh, so, so yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it there. Yeah, so you, you will. know how to be built by uh, you connect thank you very much uh, jacob thank you and we will have jens